Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to speak today. I should start off by clarifying that I am not the Prime Minister. Now, that's not normally a clarification I make when routinely speaking at conferences, but to put in context, the Leader of the Opposition yesterday questioned the Prime Minister on what they thought was one of his quotes, and in fact it was one of my quotes. Um, so I thought perhaps in that context I should make it very clear. He had to, of course, understand in orders retract and apologised to both of us, and I thought that was unusual because I can understand the Prime Minister being upset by the confusion, but you know, I wasn't too upset, I have to say. <laughs> I started Kiwi Blog in 2003. I have to say, I never thought when I started it that I would be thinking about privacy issues, let alone talking to a conference about them, because all I wanted to do was say, well, I think on issues, and that was the motivation behind it. If only things were quite that simple, you can see up on the screen some of the privacy issues that I have through my involvement with KiwiBlock, uh, and there's quite a few of them. The first is protecting the email addresses, because often that's effectively the name of someone, of over 8,000 registered commenters. We heard before about anonymous speech on the internet, and to some degree, I don't know, like a lot of anonymous speech because it tends to be the lower quality, more hateful stuff. But there also is though a lot of people who have very good reason to want to be anonymous. They just may not want a Google trail of their thought on issues for everyone to see. They may work in the government sector, they may be a lawyer, they may sometimes be related to a member of parliament and not want their opinions to become political issues there. So there's a lot of good reason. There. So one of the really big challenges is respecting their privacy. Um, 828,000 comments have been made. They leave behind, amongst other things, the IP addresses, which often can also reveal effectively who they are. There's been 22,000 posts, many that mention people that are in the news, and sometimes there's privacy issues around that. And also in the comment section, quite often a lot of people get mentioned in those sections. The Google searches on names is quite an interesting one because people might not realise this, but when you search on Google or anywhere to find a website and click through, I get to see what that search term was or whoever holds that site. And I really enjoy myself going into analytics and looking at what the top 100 search terms are for people finding Kiwi blog. And the one that was most amusing was after my parents went to Antarctica and they, I blogged a few of the photos, including a very cute one of two little penguins kissing each other. And the caption I stuck on the photo was just, oh, penguin sex. Now, I have a very high Google page rank, so I was surprised, but um, the following month, looking at my stats, the 12th most searched term which people found Kiwi blog on was penguin sex. <laughs> and for over a year, this was one of the most common uh, search terms that people found it on, you know, I was almost tempted to publish a list of sort of names and IP addresses of these are the people searching for penguin sex. <laughs> I made the mistake of actually one day just wondering what sites are they looking for and <laughs> found out, well, it doesn't just, that term doesn't just refer to penguins. Um, look up urbandictionary.com if you really need to find out. Um, Privacy of sources, and this is where we're getting into me more as a news media type role, and I'll come to whether that's the case or not, uh, but I get 10, 15 emails a day sometimes from people saying, you might be interested in this, this could make a good story, passing on information to me, etc. and like the media, um, I go to great lengths to protect that because otherwise they wouldn't do it if they ended up on the front pages. Um, there's an issue which I'll come to too of privacy of other commentators when things go nasty. And finally, the status under the privacy. I thought I'd start with that one now. We saw a bit of the definition before. An agency doesn't include any news medium, you heard. A news medium is simply an agency whose business consists of a news activity. So what's a news activity? A gathering of news, including... <coughs> observation on news. Well, my 
reading as a layperson is under the current Privacy Act, I think Kiwi Blog is very clearly media and would be exempt as an agency. What would be less clear is whether it's exempt for everything or just for things like people get, are passing on information, sources. Is the comment section for etc. Um, part of being a news uh, medium? Well, sometimes your news does come from there. There are also people making observation of news. So quite arguable uh, blogs are already counted under the Privacy Act as news media. However, under many other acts, they're not counted as media. I think there's 70 different acts that refer to the media, and many of them have either no definition or quite different ones. And that's where I think the Law Commission pro project's been invaluable. And um, for those who don't know, I did a submission supporting very strongly the broad thrust of it. Uh, Raoul, of course, is always uh, quibbling on some of the details. So, if Kiwi Blogs an agency, are all blogs that comment on news that sent for the news activity? What about Facebook and Twitter pages, where some people use those in a blog-like fashion, where it's a running commentary on the political events of the day? So, it's a very wide area there, and as I said, um, a common harmonised definition, I think, would be a very good thing. I have a privacy policy up on Kiwi Blog. Soon as I started to realise people actually read it, I thought it would be a good idea. And it lists, and again, people are often surprised by how much information is recorded by them just either reading the site or sometimes leaving a comment on the site. People often don't realise about the machine names. Uh, if you work for a corporate too, they sometimes do useful things like use your surname to identify the machine, which means... Um, even uh, without having to look it up, basically, you're broadcasting your identity over the internet. So I've said, look, this is what you make available to me. Um, I'm quite proud of the policy. I, I did it seven years ago, and you can see it there online, but it actually says I reserve all rights to do whatever I want with it um, because I wanted the wriggle room, but... I actually intend not to do much with it unless you do very nasty stuff or the final wriggle room if you really piss me off. Uh, and all that, um, the requirements, of course, under the Privacy Act is to have a privacy policy and apply by it. Um, for some reason, 8,500 people have actually um, um, either not read the policy, like with Apple's iTunes, or uh, have enough trust that despite the very wide get out of jail card for me, I'm not going to start uh, revealing their identities. Um, obviously, there's a serious reputational issue for me if I do start doing that, so um, it's not quite as wise thing. I will just touch on three cases, though, where I have revealed people's personal information. The first one is when... Someone who was running a Sifts Watch blog made death threats. Well, they weren't quite death threats about Sue Bradford, but said she'd be a good target for political assassination. I think that's close enough. Didn't make them on Kiwi blog, but they did comment on Kiwi blog on another issue. And I actually thought that was uh, sort of horrible enough, shall we say, to proactively go to Sue's office and say, um, if you let the police know, uh, they can get the IP address details of that person. Of course, then a warrant to the ISP or a request will identify them, and uh, that actually happened. The second case was probably worse. Um, these uh, where someone left probably the most vile comment I've ever seen on the Sophie Alec case. I actually thought it might somehow be Weatherston or a mate of his from jail, and referred that one straight on to the Dunedin police who investigated it. The third one is very recent, um, and <laughs> Mike will have some sympathy perhaps for me here, where there was a recent thread on the David Bain uh, case, and the biggest ever commented, there were 1,200 comments made on it, went for around two weeks as those passionately on one side or the other uh, went hammer and tongs. But then got to the point where one of them referred to the personal circumstances of another and he claimed that was a breach of his privacy and in fact as a breach of the Harassment Act and demanded I hand over the names and details of the other commenters. 
and with this clear implication, his lawyer being CC'd on these emails, that I could be named in any action if I refused to do that. And that was the first time actually I'd come across uh, that one for private action. They claim the Trade Me policy says that Trade Me will hand it over in similar circumstances. I did the wise thing of checking and found that's not quite the case. The procedure I actually put in place was first to email the commenters and say, they want your details, what do you think of that? One of them came back and said no. They said, actually, he's the one harassing us. He does this all the time. He does it on Trade Me uh, and makes our life in. The other person didn't respond at all, despite two requests. The decision I've reached is that I won't release the one of the person who said no, even though um, they say they require it for legal proceedings. But I will release the person who didn't reply to me um, giving consent. Now this won't necessarily identify them. All it gives them is an IP address and, and an email address. They would need cooperation um, of others there. There is some risk that they'll now try and involve me in court action, but I've made the point to them that they can just get court order asking that information to be revealed, uh, which hopefully is what they'll do if they uh, pursue it any further. I'll just touch on... That's fine. I'll just touch on the very last one, social media information. Th this has been a very big issue, um, especially in the recent years, etc. I've got a couple of examples there where um, social media information goes round and forms part of news media stories. The final point I just really wanted to make is that the proposal from the Law Commission of a combined media regulator, my hope is then that what might come out of it is a combined media code on the appropriate use of personal information, including that source from social media. But I don't accept that just because you've stuck on Facebook to share with your friends, yes, that's semi-public, that that is an absolute license for it to be used um, and shared with the rest of the world. Uh, thank you.